today we're going to be talking about worry breaks. And first I wanted to find what a worry is and how, dif- how it's different from just a thought, right? As moms, we have lots of worries. We think of it. The worries that we have are about the past and about the future, right? We have, we worry about if we did things right, if, um, you know, how that affects our kids, like the different things that happened in the past. And then we also worry about the future, things that we can't control, like the what ifs, the worst case scenarios. And that's what makes thinking different from worrying is because worrying is characterized by catastrophizing. It is repetitive and it is unproductive. When we think, right, when we're thinking it is more productive, it is not something that we're ruminating on. Worries, we start ruminating. We start obsessing over if we did things right. It's full of self-doubt, self-doubt, and it is regretful. It is just unproductive, right? It does not serve us when we get stuck in worries. So why should we address worry though? Like, it's okay. It's okay to worry. And I'm going to show you today, I'm going to talk about, you know, how to take a break from worry and how to take a break to worry, which I'll explain that in a minute. But when it becomes excessive, when it stops you in your tracks and prevents you from moving forward or prevents you from like even functioning, that is when it really becomes problematic. So it's important to address the worry because you're going to feel better. Your mood is going to improve just as a natural consequence of addressing that worry and acknowledging it, you're going to be able to be more present in your life and in your relationships. Because when your thought is, when your thoughts are somewhere else, when you're continually worrying about something that happened in the past or continually worrying about what's going to happen in the future, it prevents you from being present. And so today I'm going to share with you some strategies about how to remove the worry or how to deal with the worries so that you can be fully present in your life. And that's going to help improve your relationships. It's going to help you feel less tense and nervous. It's going to help you have more clarity in your mind. And who doesn't want that, right? As moms, we're constantly bombarded with mom brain. We've got the mental load in overdrive and we're constantly thinking of all the things that we need to be doing or that we should be doing or that we want to be doing. And this can create a lot of chaos in your mind. And so when you can properly and effectively address the worries that are racing through your mind, you can create clarity and clear your mind of some of that chaos. And then finally, it'll be able to help you appreciate the things in life that bring you joy and satisfaction. We're coming up to Thanksgiving and you've probably been hearing a lot about gratefulness. Well, by the time this gets repurposed into a podcast, Thanksgiving would have already been passed, but it is, I mean, there's so many, there's such a power that being grateful is powerful, right? Practicing gratitude. And when you can effectively deal with the worries in your mind, it allows you to bring more joy into your life, practice gratitude more regularly, So first, we're going to talk about how to take a break from worry. And I do want to mention that both of these, taking a break from worry and taking a break to worry, are both both important parts of self-care. Both are important to include in your routines so that you can be fully present for your family, so that you can be your best version. So because worrying happens all in your mind, it is so important to get your mind refocused. And one way to do that, one way to take a break from worrying, because if you're obsessively worrying or your worrying is taking over your life, use some distractions. And one way to distract is through self-care. I've talked last week, we went all through different self-care practices. Um, And if you were in my Moms Without Kids challenge, self-care challenge, you know Um, that what to do to take care of yourself. You've defined what it means to fill your cup. So I'm just going to give you a few ideas of ways that you can distract and take your mind off of the worries and onto something else. So maybe this means researching a fun getaway. 
right? Jumping on the computer and distracting yourself by researching a fun vacation or planning a fun vacation, even better. Calling a friend who never fails to put you in a bad mood. Leaning into your support system. Making sure that you are surrounding yourself with people that are building you up rather than toxic relationships or toxic people that are pulling you down. Watching a funny movie or a video, looking up jokes, you know, looking up funny YouTube videos, watching videos on like with some people I've, you know, I've had clients the past say they watch funny videos of like pe- of puppies or animals, right? Like making sure that you are intentionally putting in time for your, of your day into your day where you can distract yourself. And I just learned that we laugh an average of 13 times a day. That's just on an average. Some people laugh less, some people laugh more, but making sure that you are, laughter is really the best medicine, right? But making sure that you are giving yourself opportunities to uplift your mood. Also dropping into your body can help you take that break from worry. And what I mean by that is because the worrying is always happening in your mind, right? It's the thoughts that you're having that you start ruminating on. Dropping into your body can help refocus or bring, you can help ground you. So maybe doing something with your hands, maybe making bread or trying your hands in a new recipe. If you are focused on making that bread or putting ingredients into a recipe or into a dish, your focus is on that. Maybe doing a sport, doing some running or swimming or a game of tag with your kids, go you know, play with them, do a board game, something that's gonna distract you and get you away from the thoughts that are racing through your mind. Do some crafting. Music is a huge coping skill, listening to music or playing music, right? If you are singing. But when you are in the act of doing something, when you're taking action, it's, it takes energy, right? And energy, you need that energy. So you take that energy from all of the worrying and you put that into something productive. All right. So now that is how to take a break from worrying. But we need to make time for worrying. And so this is where worrying breaks come in to play. Your mind needs time to process your thoughts. This is the reason why when you get to, when you put your head on the pillow at night, your mind starts racing because as super moms, we're super busy, right? And our days are filled with making sure everything is taken care of. And so when you lie in bed at night, your mind says, all right, now it's time to process all all the day. It's time to worry at this point. And so that is why worry breaks are so important, right? You you take back control and you say, this is when I'm going to worry. So you designate how it works is you designate a um, specific time in your day to worry. You don't want it too close to the to your bedtime or at the end of the day, although you can do like six o'clock, right? You want to put a deadline on that time. So 20 minutes tops, usually 15, 20 minutes, give yourself that time and say, okay, it's 6 p.m. tonight. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to worry, <laughs> right? I know it sounds ridiculous, but studies have actually shown that this works. Try it, right? What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? If, you, if 20 minutes, if you just say, I'm going to worry about my, my worries, I'm going to think about my worries for 20 minutes, but I'm going to, you know, wait until this designated worry time in order to make it happen. So let me just, okay. So you want a quiet place. So maybe you want to do it before the kids get home from school or, or do it early in the morning. Or when you put the kids, well, we don't want it close to your bedtime. So I was going to say, maybe put it close to when the kids go to sleep, but that's probably going to be closer to your bedtime. But you want to pick a time, 20 minutes, you can do this. Limit distractions, 
put a sign on the door. I have a sign on my door right now. It says, I'm doing a Facebook live. Do not come running in. <laughs> so, you know, like let your kids know, let your family in like, okay, I'm just going to have 20 minutes of my, of my time or me time. And just so I can hear my thoughts. It's okay to do this. It's okay to put up some boundaries. So when you're not in your worry time, so during the day when these thoughts pop up, you might want to just jot them down, carry around a piece of paper, or we all carry our phones, right? Put open up a notes app and just put some notes. This is, you know, some key words of things that you're worried about or that are, are, are racing through your mind. Then during your worry time, you're going to take out that piece of paper and you're going to write out your thoughts and possible solutions. And if it's something like from the past, how can you, how can you deal with that? Maybe it, it means that you need to forgive yourself or forgive somebody else. Maybe you need to practice some self-compassion, self but whatever it is, just take that 20 minutes and focus on those worries. Some of them are going to seem irrelevant. When you sit down to like process those worries, you're going to be like, that's silly. I don't know why I was worried about that. That's irrelevant at this point. They're going to seem like no big deal. So release it. And some worries may be, you may need to work through. And then at the end of those 20 minutes, you get up and you go back to life, right? It is so important to put that deadline on it because otherwise you could spend an hour trying to problem solve, trying to work through those worries. 20 minutes. And then later on, remind yourself, I did this work. I already worried about this. I don't need to worry about it now. And I'm telling you, it sounds silly, but it's, it, it actually works. So like I mentioned before, both of these, taking a break from worry and taking a break to worry are important pieces of self-care. So if you are struggling with excessive worry, like to the point where it's crippling you, I encourage you to perhaps see a therapist, seek professional help. But if you are able to implement this or you need some guidance, some support and accountability in your journey of living your best life, that's when, that's when I come in handy, right? <laughs> I come in handy. That's the kind of work that I do as a coach. As a coach, I will guide you and I will support you and I will provide that accountability as you work towards your best self. So if you book a call with me before December 15th, I'm also going to throw in a free ticket to one of two vision board parties that I'm having at the end of this year. Well, the last week we'll be working on vision boards. So you'll get a free ticket of that. Plus, you'll get clarity around what's stopping you, what's keeping you on the back burner and preventing you from becoming your best self and giving you, giving yourself and your family, the mom, the wife, the woman that you are worthy of becoming. So momswithoutcapes.com backslash love yourself. Book a call today. 